Orleans residents react as they relive the horrifying details of last night's events. Also coming up, we have live team coverage from Ground Zero. Debbie Gino's Peyton Trist and Kenny Lopez have live looks and details on the storm's aftermath. You're watching Good Morning New Orleans. Thanks for waking up with us on oh, Good Morning New Orleans. I'm Stephanie Chainock. I'm Tamika Lee. It was a dangerous and frightening night in Southeast Louisiana. Yeah. Aftermath is devastating. As you can see behind us, confirmations of tornadoes cutting through the destructive paths through St. Bernard Parish and Orleans parishes. Yeah, rescue crews raced searching door to door in some areas looking for anyone who might be trapped. St. Bernard Parish appears to have taken the biggest hit, especially in Araby. Many homes have sustained serious damage or even been destroyed. At least one person this morning is dead, and we are uncertain of the number of injuries at this time that may have resulted from the storm. That's right. What we do know now is that the power outages across the uh, hardest hit areas have left thousands in the dark, and local authorities say once daybreak hits, true assessments can be uh, made in those areas and start to rebuild again. Yeah, absolutely. And we begin our team coverage this morning with reporters bringing us the latest details from those hardest hit areas. That's right. Peyton Trist is live in St. Bernard Parish. Peyton. Yeah, good morning, Tamika and Seth. The severity here is absolutely unreal. Search and rescue crews have been continuing to work through the night to go from home to home to see if there is anyone who's trapped inside because we're seeing that Lots of homes have been completely destroyed, have been leveled, pushed off of their foundations. And even here at Araby Elementary School, we're seeing devastation and destruction and seeing just how strong that tornado was when it rolled through this area last night. You can see that this school bus behind me has been flipped. It's overturned. You can see the underside of the bus. And you know, this is just giving me chills because one street over, it looks like it was just a little bit of rain and maybe some gusty winds, nothing of damage over in that area. But then when you walk over here, it's unbelievable. You know, when that her that when that storm touched down last night, that tornado ripped through the area. And I spoke with a viewer who watches us diligently, and he said that it was nothing like a hurricane was. You could see the massive destruction. You could see how quickly it was moving through the area. That tornado ripped through. He was watching over in Airby, watching as that tornado hit the ninth ward and it went through and ripped up apart that area as well. And he was telling me that as he heard the tornado passing, it sounded like a freight train was headed straight for them. And you could see just how large it was as the cruise ship was crossing through the Mississippi River. It's incredible seeing what kind of size that storm was and what kind of damage it was able to hit here in this area and in the ninth ward. We're going to keep you guys updated. They are working all of the officials. You can hear them coming down this way. They're making sure that there's no sightseers who are out in this area because we can't really tell what exactly we're dealing with because that storm hit at nightfall and it's still dark outside. But I know that once that sun does come out this morning, it's going to be true heartbreak to see what these people are going to be dealing with. We'll keep you updated throughout the morning. I'm Peyton Trist reporting live in Araby, WGNO News. All right, thanks, Peyton. A lot of cleanup for those in Araby right now. That's right. We're going to toss it over to Brooke Laser, meteorologist Brooke Laser, checking in with that forecast. Good morning. The time now is 5.03 and your forecast first is brought to you by New Orleans Roast. The great news we have today to share is that all this weather is well to our east and the next stretch looks absolutely fantastic. So at least for the cleanup process, it will be cooler since the cold front came through last night and it will be dry as well in terms of repairs or complete and total rebuilding. So temperatures now in the upper 50s we will continue to see temperatures falling over the course of the morning because that coldest air has not filtered in everywhere across the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Less devastation, of course, than we were seeing in parts of WGNO's viewing area. Beach camera at Beau Rivage, nice and quiet in comparison on yesterday when it was shaking as a result of those winds. The 24 hour temperature change at the moment significantly cooler, about 16 to 20 degrees in most spots and off toward Baton Rouge, Lafayette, New Iberia, 
where that coldest air has already made its impact closer to 30 degrees colder than we were waking up yesterday. And if you remember, yesterday we woke up about 30 degrees warmer than the day before. So these dynamic air mass changes are the reason that we have the possibility for severe weather when it does roll through. That being said, toward the northwest corner of the state in the low 50s, even some 40s in Lake Charles and Baton Rouge. We're about 10 degrees warmer here in New Orleans proper. So those wind speeds picking up a bit in New Orleans proper, but we'll continue to see them die down over the course of your day with plenty of sunshine in store. And the time now is 505, so let's get you out the door and check on traffic. Again, the biggest element of today's story is, of course, all the damage from last night, and there's a lot of that blocking roads, especially as you head out toward New Orleans East. So please, this morning before the sun comes up, be intentional in staying off of those if possible. Lots of unknowns, including nails, like you heard Kenny say. Also, some possible down power lines, likely not active, but as these crews start to turn the power back on, you certainly don't want to encounter one of those. Otherwise, across the West Bank, same overall situation. A lot of damage on the ground there, too, but coming across the bridge, only a four-minute drive. Back to you all. All right, thanks, Brooke. Next up, we do have St. Bernard Parish President Guy McGinnis on the phone, who is also on the ground. Uh, good morning, and thank you for taking the time to speak with us. We wish it was under different circumstances, but what would you like to tell the viewers and the residents of St. Bernard Parish uh, this morning? Yeah, well, well, thank you guys for checking in on us. I, I, you know, we, we just need to make sure that everyone stays away from these areas, you know, St. Claude is closed down now. It's impassable. We have electrical um, poles down throughout the area. Um, Entergy is in the areas working, so it's dangerous. We have Atmos working in those areas. Our first responders are still doing search and rescue um, operations. Um, this morning here, we're going to get an assessment. Um, we're going to know how many homes, how many people were affected. Um, we have one confirmed death. Uh, we had seven people. It's a miracle that only seven people went to the hospital with minor injuries. And we have seven people at our shelter at Dowry's Complex. So um, our sheriff and um, actually the state fire marshal um, is down, and they're going to be doing an assessment for us this morning. We'll be meeting with the governor later this morning. Um, been talking with Steve Scalise and and Cedric Richmond and those guys about federal relief. And uh, we got a lot of work to do today. And, um, you know, Araby was the fastest mm -hmm. growing community in the country here recently. And uh, we've been hit hard, but we're going to come back bigger and better. You've been urging your residents to stay inside and stay safe off the streets. It is dark outside. But what if someone needs help? Any resources available for anyone who needs um, help? Yeah, we, we have a shelter, like I said, and last night our fire department and our sheriff's office went out and made sure that everyone was taken care of and that they they had, um, you know, all of the needs uh, met. And we're still doing that this morning. But um, if you live in this area, there is a sheriff's deputy on a corner or outside of your home. So it, it's real simple to, to get the assistance. We are overwhelmed with the amount of support from surrounding parishes and the city of New Orleans. We've talked to all of their leaders. Um, they're awesome. We're just waiting to see this morning what our needs are as far as equipment and as far as, uh, you know, food and shelter for our residents. It seems like a lot of our residents um, had family to go to, mm -hmm. um, and a lot stayed at their homes last night. But um, we're going to be doing all of those assessments this morning. And, you know, we've, uh, St. Bernard Parish, <clears throat> like many other parishes across, you know, our area have experienced hurricane coverage. Have you seen anything like this before in St. Bernard Parish, this type of tornado damage and impact for your residents? You know, I, I haven't, um, as far as a tornado, this, this uh, um, amount of damage. Uh, but it's, you know, damage is damage, you know, it's, it's like Katrina after the water came out in some of these areas, right? So it's, it's just something, uh, it, I guess it's sad that, that we are used to this and we have experience um, recovering from it. Um, you know, we are resilient like we are in all of Louisiana here with uh, everything that's been happening um, lately. So I know our residents are, are uh, upbeat and they're going to get out this morning. They're going to start cleaning up and 
we're going to have a new outlook once we can get some uh, daylight. And before we let you go and get back to recovery efforts, uh, school closures. We know Arby Elementary is closed. Any other schools in the St. Bernard Parish area, high schools, elementary schools that are closed today? As far as I know, Arby Elementary is the only school that is closed. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Guy McGinnis, and um, we will check back in with you. And, of course, St. Bernard Parish is in our thoughts and prayers. Again, yeah. you've said it, resilient residents out there um, with this devastating heartbreak overnight. Thank you all, and God bless. Thank you. Well, many will be waking up to damage this morning. Uh, it's the quiet after the storm, but it was terrifying moments for those who lived through last night's string of storms. Some described as simply as just scary. So I, I got the call when I was at work, and they, they called me. They were in, they sheltered in the tub, and I just he, I heard my baby crying. So I just left work, and and this is my first time even. Like, I'm shaking right now because I this is my first time seeing the damage. In a tornado, and I screamed that hard to get in the bathtub, and I ran in there and leaned over her and in the bathtub, and uh, it went on for about a minute or so. It wasn't long, but it was pretty noisy and really bad. You know, it was scary. Let's put it like that. It was really scary, you know. Uh, me and my wife were watching TV, and my son was in his room, and my wife heard the train and yelled at my son. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. My goodness, a once in a lifetime occurrence, you know. Get in the bathroom, he gets in the tub, she's right after him, and I'm on the floor in the bathroom. Wow. So scary. So scary. so scary. So scary. Um, as we continue our coverage on last night's storm, mm -hmm. the large tornado that battered St. Bernard Parish last night, it left at least one person dead. Yeah, and we just saw the town of Araby, one of the hardest hit areas, leaving that small community pretty much in ruins. We had Anna McAllister out there, and she has a story and an update. Yeah, it felt like a freight train, big noise, and the roof started shaking, and objects start flying all over the place. And Devastation throughout Araby after a deadly tornado ripped through St. Bernard Parish, leaving at least one person dead and many homes and businesses destroyed. My house. That's your house? That my great-grandparents built in 1901 and I restored it about four years ago. So having lost one house in Katrina and now this is kind of tough to look at. Residents recall the horrifying moments they heard the tornado approaching, many fearing for their lives. As I was trying to lock the door, you know, I see all this debris and a tornado right in front of my face. I've never seen that before in my entire life. The aftermath of the damage extensive. Buildings tore apart, power lines ripped down, the powerful wind gusts even flipping cars. It was all in the uh, next door in Whiskey Bayou and we all took cover. Then when I come out, I see my car flipped over on the highway. While assessment of the damage is just beginning, officials and residents started cleaning up immediately, determined to pick up the pieces left behind by yet another deadly storm. New Orleanian people we, and, and Shamed people and Arabian people, we, we know how to get through this stuff. We'll be fine. Anna McAllister, WGNO News. And search and rescue efforts continue this morning in St. Bernard Parish, and we will continue our live coverage and the latest updates here on WGNO. Coming up, we will continue that coverage on the devastating tornadoes that ripped through multiple parishes. And more information on preliminary track details, also your forecast for a gorgeous stretch of weather ahead coming up next. Stay with us.
Infinite Chain On, and meteorologist Brooke Laser. Well, the time now is 5.17, so heads up, St. Bernard Parish Public School System wants to update school students on a closure. Today, Araby Elementary School will be closed due to the tornado damages. All other public schools in St. Bernard Parish will be open and will follow their normal schedules. Also, there are some road closures to report as a result of last night's storm. St. Bernard Highway is closed from Rowley Boulevard to the Parish Line because of heavy debris and down power lines. Residents will be able to leave by traveling westbound on Judge Perez Drive or via Paris Road starting at 630 this morning. All eastbound lanes heading into St. Bernard Parish are closed. And this morning, this morning, I should say nearly 2,500 customers are without power in New Orleans East and St. Bernard Parish. Many of the outages, um, more than 1,800, are in the Araby area. You can see right there on the Entergy outage map. And right now, Entergy says that because of the extensive damage, they cannot give an estimated restoration time. And we're continuing our team coverage this morning. Kenny Lopez is live in Chalmette. Kenny uh, Lopez, what are you seeing right now this morning? Barely enough, but what are you seeing right there? Seth and Tamika, one thing you'll notice most about tornado damage is unpredictability. You don't really know exactly what you're going to see. One house could be standing, then you look to your right, and the other house is completely demolished. Now I just kind of want to show you a little bit of the debris in this area here on West Judge Perez Drive. You see the white picket fences are down. You see lots of mangled mess everywhere, and this is very interesting. Check it out, West Judge Press Drive street sign in Claiborne Court. I had to look it up on Google Maps to see exactly where this came from. This sign was across the street. We are not on Claiborne Court right now. We are on West Judge Press Drive though. So this blew over from across the street, just crazy. And just walk with me a little bit more. Look, more sticks down. And you gotta be very careful when you're walking around this area because as I said earlier, there's lots of fences and they have nails in it. I got a nail stuck in my Nike shoe. Luckily the soles are good, so I'm okay. But that is one of the reasons why authorities are saying they don't want people coming back to assess the damage quite yet until the sun is up because you don't know exactly you can't just be too careful. So they just want to make sure that everyone is safe. And they said, come seven o'clock, that's when they're going to let people come back in and assess their homes and the damage. And I want to tell you, as we were coming in today to this area, we saw houses with roofs ripped off. And like I said, unpredictable, just completely unpredictable. Oh, yes, yeah. just seeing that street sign blown off onto the ground. Uh, Kenny stepping on nails. Got to be careful out there. Yeah, that's why they're saying stay inside. Of course, I just asked Brooke, when is sunrise? When, when will we see light? Yeah. 6.59. So we have some time before then. Just stay safe in the meantime. Good morning. The time now is 5.20. And yes, the sun will rise at 6.59. We have three separate teams that will begin damage surveys from the National Weather Service at approximately 7 o'clock. And they will target three separate areas. So let me show you the first of concern with the possible tornado that may have touched down. We started watching this one as it was over Lake Pontchartrain last night, right around 715. And you can see the icon here close to Mandeville on the map. Let me walk you through about a 20 minute time frame. There as it progressed off of water and continued inland, we saw an extremely traditional textbook looking hook echo, which in meteorology school you study as the center point of rotation on the ground for a possible storm. So it likely started as a water spout and sometimes these don't continue on to land, but this one was so defined, it actually did and it tracked right between Mandeville and Lacombe in a northeast fashion toward the Mississippi line. So that area, thankfully, a little bit less populated than some very nearby areas like Mandeville, Madisonville, up toward Covington, had it taken a different path and direction. That is going to be the first location for these survey teams. The second, of course, the tornado we've been discussing all morning. The survey team will start near Gretna, which is where this tornado likely began. And then it progressed across the West Bank, jumped over the Mississippi River, which we've got some wild video to show you of a cruise ship coming down the river as this tornado just continued with immeasurable force and speed 
landed near Araby, and that's where the majority of this destruction we're showcasing today is in the lower nine all the way towards Chalmette. And then it continued into the marsh, of course, the area that has seen so much devastation with Hurricane Katrina. And of course, in terms of our traditional weather, we just don't see a lot of these long track tornadoes across southeast Louisiana, especially on the south shore. And yesterday's moderate risk was unique. It was the first ever level four out of five risk during the month of March, but we didn't end up with the biggest issue on the North Shore. It was on the South Shore, so all that weather now well to the east. And the good news is at least we have a gorgeous forecast for the next six days for cleanup efforts as temperatures will be in the 50s. Of course, the Mississippi Gulf Coast quiet right now over the course of the morning rising into the 60s and topping out about the upper 60s, not quite at 70 degrees. So the 24 hour temperature change is between about 16 and 20 degrees in most spots. We see those 50s up to the northeast and we'll continue to see our temperatures fall a bit with the wind speeds transitioning on direction and coming down over the course of your day. Absolutely gorgeous as you're headed off to school. Certainly much colder. All these storms out ahead of a cold front that came through. So hour by hour shows you that temperature drop afternoon highs only topping out in the 60s. The future cast is going to be extremely quiet over the next couple of days. Morning lows waking up tomorrow much colder as the coolest air continues to filter in. In terms of your seven day forecast, here's what you can expect looking to the week. Wall to wall sunshine, so be beside your neighbors and help them to rebuild and restore. Time now is 523 and traffic is brought to you by Chip Forstall. Again, we just continue to reiterate in these areas that saw tornadoes on the ground, Gretna all the way to the Mississippi River, up towards Algiers Point, basically this entire area. Make sure that you stay off of the roads because it is still dark and we haven't had time to officially clean up and collect all damage surveys. Nails on the road, down power lines that are becoming active as energy restores power, all a major concern. Then as you're headed toward the causeway, if you're maybe trekking towards look home this morning. Same overall situation. Those survey teams getting out there in about an hour and a half and that's when we'll have these official numbers back. It may take a couple days to define these overall impacts, but so far in terms of morning commute across the bridge itself and in the majority of the city, things should be okay. Back to you all.
Good morning, New Orleans. Search and rescue crews are continuing to work through the night to look at damage and see if there's anyone still out there who needs assistance. We'll have a live report from Araby where the tornado devastated this area coming up. And more team coverage with Debbie Gino's Paintress and also Kenny Lopez with details on the storm's aftermath. Thanks for waking up with us on Good Morning New Orleans. I'm Stephanie Chino. I'm Tamika Lee. Let's uh, start this morning off with meteorologist Brooke Laser. Good morning. Certainly a sobering night last night, and I want to right away show you the possible track of this tornado that may have touched down on the North Shore. Last night about 7.15, we started to watch a very signature textbook hook echo over Lake Pontchartrain and it was moving near the causeway. It then progressed on to land. So it started out as a water spout likely and then continued in a northeast fashion between Mandeville and Lacombe heading toward the Mississippi state line. So this morning at 7 a.m. when the sun comes up at 6:59, three separate NWS survey teams will go out one on the North Shore near this area and then the other two of course closer to the extreme large tornado that many of us saw captured on footage over the course of last night. That first team will be in Gretna and then continue across the West Bank following this specific path. So this storm jumped the Mississippi River, then headed toward the East Bank near Araby and created a significant amount of devastation. Kenny and Peyton have been showing you all morning in the lower nine and then toward Chalmette as well, all the way until it reached the levee near the marsh. Just devastating images coming in this morning and of course, We'll be keeping you posted all day today as these official numbers start to present themselves, but likely not getting those for a little while, maybe into the afternoon, if at all today. This is going to be an ongoing assessment for several at a time, just a lot to survey and take into account. Let's get you out the door and check on traffic. Time now is 536. And once again, traffic is brought to you by Chip Forstall. Heading towards Slidell this morning. Last night, we were also covering a tornado warning that was headed for Slidell at the moment no reports of this confirmed but something that may have led to a little bit of destruction so as usual, we've been saying this all morning. The biggest issue is going to be not going to any areas where there still may be active devastation on the ground when you can't see and the sun hasn't come up yet, especially down power lines. Again, we were just discussing Mandeville Lacombe area coming off of the causeway. That water spout, of course, not causing any damage itself across the bridge, so you're fine as you're traveling there for 24 minutes. But stay posted over the course of the morning as we continue to bring you updated information on damage assessments. Back to y'all. All right, we are continuing our coverage this morning uh, with reporters bringing us the latest details from those hardest hit areas. That's right, Steph. And right now we're going to head over to Peyton Trist. She is alive in St. Bernard Parish. Peyton. Yeah, Tamika, Seth, search and rescue crews have been working through the night to try and secure this area and survey the damage and help anyone who might be trapped inside of their home. Now, when the storm passed, that tornado ripped through Araby, and that is exactly where we are right now. We're actually in the parking lot of Araby Elementary School, and as the storm passed, the phone calls started pouring in of reports that power lines were down, houses ripped off of their foundation and were laying in the streets and that there could be gas leaks, people trapped inside and cars flipped over. And that's what we're seeing here in the parking lot of Araby Elementary School. You can see that this is just one of several buses that was overturned. You can see that it's on its side and this is again only one that just shows you the magnitude and the strength of that storm that passed through this area. And then if my photographer Cole Walker will zoom in just past this bus, you can see that this is exactly why first responders don't want people going out and sightseeing. You can see that there's a lot of debris in the road. You can see a pole is puncturing through that windshield of a car. Imagine that was flying all over this area last night around 730 when that tornado touched down and ripped through this area. And take a look at this video that one of our viewers sent while he was on the riverbank, the Mississippi Riverbank in Araby, watching as that tornado tore through the lower ninth ward. 
You can see how large and devastating that tornado is because a cruise ship passes by down that Mississippi River. You can see the transformers exploding. And when I asked him, you know, what was that like? What, what did it look like? What did it sound like? He said that it sounded like a freight train was headed straight for them. And he said that it was terrifying. It was like watching a movie play out in real life. Now, guys, we're going to wait here and see as the sun rises what exactly we're dealing with because you know last night when that tornado hit it was nightfall and now it's still dark out here we know that once that sun comes up it's going to be eye opening and heartbreaking seeing what type of devastation is left behind we'll keep you updated i'm peyton trist reporting live in Araby, wgno news Wow. I know you, you had mentioned, you had asked uh, Guy McKenna's uh, parish, St. Barb Parish president, has he ever seen anything like this before? Yeah. You know, if we've had hurricanes and, and damage mm -hmm. for many, you know, all of our life. He yeah. said he's never seen anything like this. Yeah, he said not from a tornado. Right. And so, you know, this is just something new that that area is witnessing. And just the visuals that Peyton just mm -hmm. showed us just now, wow, that branch through the windshield of the tree, the school bus overturned. It's a lot that we're going to be seeing once the sun rises. Once the sun rises, that's for sure. And we are continuing our team coverage this morning. This time we're going to go to Kenny Lopez live in Chalmette. Kenny, what are you seeing out there this morning? Hey, Seth and Tamika, very messy out here. Definitely a tornado ripped through this area. And the first thing we noticed is that uh, cars are now being able on Judge Perez Drive to get through. Earlier, they were blocked off, but now you'll see on the left of me lots of traffic flowing down um, the main strip of the road. Now, I want to show you some of the debris, some of the damage. You see white picket fence down. Oh, I, my foot just got stuck in something right here. And as you keep going, you see more fences down. You see pieces of roof you see this sign and I checked Google Maps we are located at West Judge Perez Drive but Claiborne Court is actually across the street and this was right here in this homeowner's yard now the home in the background over here that we saw windows are blown out but luckily it's made out of brick so it's solid and it, it stayed and uh, just this whole area is a big mess and I want you to know that if you were displaced if you're one of those people who lost your home there is a shelter shelter set up at the Del Reese complex for anybody that needs a place to stay. Um, and in the meantime, we'll stay out here and we'll bring you more coverage of all the damage here in this area in St. Bernard Parish. Yeah, I got to be careful out there. And I can hear cars in the background, Kenny, hoping that everyone heeds the warning of staying inside their house until the sun rises. Yeah. All right, guys, coming up, the latest on the deadly carjacking in Mid-City, plus what the family tells us about the life of Linda Frick. Plus, all the weather we were dealing with last night, well off to our east at this point. A gorgeous forecast for the next seven days. Some good news as cleanup efforts begin. Details up next. Stay with us.
545 and I want to walk you through at least one of possibly two tornadoes on the ground last night. The first we were of course seeing around 715 730 as it came across the lake Pontchartrain area as a water spout and then progressed inland. And you can see our storm reports from the archived radar information showcase it having moved between Mandeville and Lacombe in a northeast fashion toward the Mississippi state line. So this morning at 7 o'clock, we'll have three separate NWS survey teams deployed to get more information on damage. The second will start in Gretna, where the large tornado began on the ground and then continued across the West Bank basically likely having lifted near Algiers Point because we didn't see as much damage there and the energy map didn't show as many power outages. Then jumping as it crossed the Mississippi River to Araby, where most of the destruction Peyton and Kenny have been showing you this morning is located, not to mention the lower nine and then Shalmet all the way to the levee toward the marsh. So again, all of this is preliminary. We're just looking at what we believe to have been the track given all that we tracked on radar and then of course report from our radar itself and from individuals in the field. But the satellite radar picture clearing up considerably across the entire south as these storms continue to push throughout Florida. But at a much lesser intensity. Temperatures in the 50s this morning will continue to see them falling throughout the Mississippi Gulf Coast as well as the coldest air continues in. And you can look off to the west and see that that's been the case in Baton Rouge, New Iberia, almost 30 degrees colder than yesterday. So 50s or 40s are the theme and New Orleans is by far the hot spot. These wind speeds transitioning on direction and also finally starting to come down a bit. The bus stop forecast is much colder. That's because the cold front was behind the line of storm. So we'll continue to rise into the upper 50s and then top out right around the 60s. The upper 60s struggling to make it towards 70 degrees. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. So some good news for the cleanup efforts that do begin today in those hardest hit areas. Our temperatures in the upper 60s by the afternoon will rise into the mid 60s right around 2, 3 o'clock. This evening, Wednesday at the Square for the second week back, temperatures fantastic and plenty of sun shine as well. Morning lows waking up tomorrow much colder in the 40s on both sides of Lake Pontchartrain warmer on the south shore. So here's your seven day forecast. Just a gorgeous stretch of spring like weather coming up. Thank goodness. We'll see you after the break. Stay with us.
Well, NOPD has arrested four juvenile suspects in the deadly carjacking in Mid-City that killed Linda Fricky. Police credit relatives for the juveniles. All four suspects are facing second degree murder charges, but Superintendent Ferguson wants to see them charged as adults. Look at the nature of the crime. Look at what's, what, what, what we're facing, I mean brazenness, broad daylight, uh, with no regards to this woman hanging from the vehicle. So, I mean, I, I think at some point in time, we have to step up and say we're going to hold individuals accountable. A small memorial has now been set up on North Pier Street. Good morning. We are bringing you your forecast for a beautiful stretch of weather ahead as temperatures remain in the 50s and fall a bit after last night's cold front. Details coming up. Good morning. Our forecast for today is going to be beautiful as temperatures will come out of the 50s and top out in the 60s. This afternoon, Wednesday, the square is back in Lafayette Square and it will be absolutely fantastic for it. Sunshine with warmer conditions. Then, of course, once the sun goes down, we'll see those 50s return and much colder as you're waking up tomorrow in the 40s on both sides of Lake Pontchartrain. That's because the coldest air from 
the front that all these storms last night were out ahead of will be filtering in tomorrow. So the upper 40s across South Shore locations and look at this seven day forecast. Just a phenomenal stretch of weather we have over the course of the next seven days. Temperatures will start to rise into the mid 70s tomorrow and Saturday. We'll see the 80s for the start of next week and you'll wake up in the 40s several mornings this week as well. So some good news in terms of cleanup efforts across Orleans Parish, St. Bernard Parish and on the North Shore. Let's get you out the door and check on traffic. Time now is 556 and once again traffic is brought to you by Chip Forstall. So as we get into the overall time frame for driving with the sunrise, we'll be able to know more about damage on the roads. But this morning, taking you about 28 minutes across the twin spans, we did have a tornado warning near Slidell last night. No confirmation on that having been a definitive tornado at the moment. Otherwise, sending another survey team toward Mandeville Lacombe area. So 24 minutes for the bridge itself looks untouched. Otherwise, be careful, especially on the West Bank and near Araby or Chalmette, any areas that we are concerned about at the moment. Fine coming off of the causeway into Metairie and heading toward the city itself, the CBD. Back to y'all after the break.